All right, 8.2. Um, so we're going to, again, we're going to go from a matrix to a system and a system to a matrix. We're going to perform row, row operations. All row operations are is what we've been doing with elimination, multiplying and adding to create what we need and want, right? That's all matrix operations are. Um, so here we go. Definition of a matrix is a rectangular array of numbers, only numbers. We eliminate variables and we're strictly focused and working on the numbers, okay? So how do I write a system as a matrix? So here we have two examples. So we have a two variable system and a three variable system. Do we see that? First and foremost, when you're writing a system as a matrix, you want all of your variables on one side. So with this one, we're good to go. But with this one, are all of our variables and our co constant separated? No. So before we can do anything, we're gonna have to do that. So let's start with A. So looking at A, it's good to go. So literally you are eliminating the variables and writing the constant. So coefficients and constants are the only thing that go into your augmented matrix. Ringing a bell? Okay. So three, four, one, three, four, negative one. Some people like to use the, the line, the vertical line to separate your coefficients and your constants. It's totally up to you. It's a personal preference. Um, so whichever way you want to do it, no one will stop it, okay? So we're both in agreement that y'all are good, that we're, you don't need to pay attention to the review. Yeah. So you remember all of this. Yeah. 100%? Yeah. What? No, so then no. you should be watching yesterday's video. Okay. All right. So when we are writing this coefficient, all variables are present. So, and no variables. And what that does is that if you are easily distracted by a, by a bunch of stuff on your paper, um, then you're eliminating those variables, okay? So this problem, are all of my coefficients on one side and my constants on the other? Yes, no, maybe so. No, negative four and negative seven are constants, right? They're not coefficients because they don't have a variable. So before I do anything, I need to move them to the other side of the equal sign. So I'm going to add and then put in fillers for X and Y because X, Y aren't present. Do you remember putting in zeros as fillers? Okay, because every, every variable has to be represented. Yeah? yeah. Ring and bell? Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so you place, not the D, you place what variables are going to be. So this one didn't have a Y, this one didn't have an X. So we replaced our Y with a zero and our X with a zero. Right? Does that make sense? Oh, Miles, you're going to make me get in trouble on my walkthrough. Yeah, she just did a walkthrough and you were just on social media. Oh, I'm sorry. It's cool. It is what it is. I don't know. Yeah. That's all right. It's all right. I'm not. Huh? You didn't know what to say. Yeah. I did. I'll see you. He did a great job. Anyway, continue. You weirdo. So notice how you have to put the zeros in your augmented matrix. You see what we did? So we put in the zeros as our clocks, as our coefficients, and in the matrix, they have to be present because those are the coefficients there. Okay. Yes? Yes. Wait, just don't. Just don't leave. Okay. Again, all variables on one side, constants on the other, and in the matrix, we only put our coefficients in our constants. Because every variable has to be represented. And if I do zero times the variable, does that affect the equation? No, but if I did one, that changes the equation because one just means that it's already there. Zero means that it's not present. And so, because it's missing a Y. So it has X and Z, but what? But what variable is missing? Y. And this one has Y and Z, but what variable is missing? And so when I write the augmented matrix, I'm going to also include those zeros. Okay. 
because they're your cohort. Got it? Capiche? Oh, tired. All right, now we're gonna go other way. So writing an augmented matrix into a system. So what if they give you this? Can you go back? You hopefully can, right? So if, they, if we come here and we go backwards, um, you're gonna think alphabetically. First row is X, second row is Y, last row is your constant. On a, on a big one, X, Y, Z, constant. Yes? Okay, so on A, A is pretty simple. What should A look like? Brandon, what should A look like? Mm -hmm. You said yes, yes, yes. So how do I write this as a system with variables since you said yes, yes, yes? Is that a no, no, no? <laughs> Alex. Alex. Oh, they look like Alex. Alex. Right. So, so one X minus two Y is the Awesome. And then my other one is there we go. Okay. Okay, we're about to do B, but are we good with A? Yes. Yes, you remember now? All right. B had zeros, right? And so those zeros mean, are they represented in the system? No, they're not. So when we write B, make sure that you're not including those in the system. So what does the second row not have? And the third row doesn't have X. We see that? Okay, so it turns out to be this. Bing. I actually remember Now you remember for real? Yeah. <laughs> I know, Brandon. Yeah. It was, you know, I, I literally oh. copied the campus, the campus lesson to this year. Okay. Are we good with converting? No. Yes. Can we go back and forth? Not easily. Yeah. If, if if you get these questions wrong on your homework. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> yes, I don't know. What to tell you. you get these wrong on your homework. I just said I don't know what to tell you. I literally said the words. All right. Row operations. Row operations are what we've been doing with elimination, but we're not worried about X, Y, and Z. We're just worried about the eliminating and changing the rows and columns. Okay. So things you can do with your rows, you can interchange them. So you can switch row one with row two. You can replace a row by a non-zero multiple. So like I can multiply that row by one, negative two, negative three, things I can do with elimination, right? Um, I can replace a row by the sum. So I actually can add two rows together and make a whole new row out of that. Um, so these are the things we can do with rows to make them and manipulate. It's like playing an endless puzzle game. I know, so fun. So for example, I have one, negative four, two, negative six, and one and eight, okay? And it wants me to do the following row operation. It says R2 equals negative two R1 plus R2. So that means I'm changing row two to this operation. So it wants me to multiply row one by negative two and then add it to row two. Does that make sense? Wait, columns, or... columns stand, rows you sit. Columns stand, rows you sit. Okay. So here, it wants me to follow this. So to create my new row, I'm going to multiply everything here by negative two and then add it to this guy. And then that's going to become my new one. So what that looks like, multiplying, and then I add. So one times negative two plus two, negative four times negative two plus negative six, one times negative two plus eight, and that becomes my new row two.
So what row operations allow you to do is unlike elimination where you have to do things step by step by step by step, with row operations, you can do things in multiple steps. So notice how when I capitalized it, that means that this is a new row versus the lowercase, which is my current row. So what is my new row? What's negative two times one plus two? Thank you, I was concerned. Uh, what is negative two times negative four plus negative six? Two. And then what is negative two times one plus eight? Say that again. Six. You said six, Alex? You said six, Alex? You said six? Okay. You said six. I heard six. I heard six too. Yeah. Pretty sure you said six. Yeah. Negative two times one is what, Alex? Negative two times one? <laughs> and negative two plus eight? <laughs> it's, it's six, okay? So now notice how this is now our new row two. And that's how a row operation can take place. You can multiply and combine them and have so much fun with them. All right. Well, okay, we'll stop. <laughs> hey, this is